Hi, welcome back. So today I'm gonna be doing this look. I'm gonna be doing a little get ready with me. Um, I've been having quite the week. Uh, not the best. Not doing the best in the mental health department. Just a lot of just like chaos, sad things. Just so I found that. I always feel really good when I just do a makeup look using a bunch of bougie products because uh, who doesn't feel better when they put a bunch of like really expensive makeup on? You know what I mean? Like when you just put it on and you're like, okay, we're better. We're all better because that's how makeup always makes me feel when I have when I feel bad and then I put a little extra effort into looking nice. Um, it makes me feel a little better. Everything I use will be listed down below and um, okay, let's get to it. Hey Bones. He's really having a moment, you know? I just, I don't know what to do with him. Uh, my bangs are kind of doing their own thing today. So we're just gonna ignore that. Um, I'm gonna start with Complexion products today, I'm gonna to be using the Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade two, and I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer, and I'm using this in 1W1 Porcelain. Um, I'm finally pale enough to use this, and um, actually, a lot of my tinted moisturizers were all the same price, if not like a couple of dollars. <sighs> A couple of dollars, like, difference, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do my little dibby dab thing. So, this is kind of like the secret to how I do my complexion most times. Um, and it's something that I've been asked about a lot. Uh, I take two fingertips full of a tinted moisturizer or a concealer. I'll just put the rest on my nose here. God, there's so much, so many fuzzies. Like, what happened? To take the Hollywood Flawless Filter, if you use like the Elf one or the Auric one, or even the iconic London one, um, they're all kind of the same means to an end. Uh, I just kind of put dabs of this all over. I'm gonna put a little bit more on my cheekbones here. I just cut my bangs today and I feel so much more like myself. Like, I can't even describe how weird it's been trying to grow them out. Um, anyways, so uh, then I take a very damp, like, almost to the point of, like, if you squished it, there would be water coming out, but it, there isn't. Anyway, very damp complexion sponge and then blending them all together pretty neutral on the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. I don't dislike it, but it's also just not my favorite. Um, I find that it's not as luminous as I would like one to be. Like, I don't like to wear this unless I use the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Um, and it does seem like when I do have some dryness to my skin, like I do right now, um, it can cling. So, not my favorite, but I want to use it up. I gotta like relearn how to, oh, I get makeup in my bangs. I gotta relearn how to like go around my bangs. Growing them out is just such like a, a hard thing for me to do. I've had bangs the majority of my life and anytime I try to grow them out just to give my hair some, my, my part some more like growth. Cause you know when you part your hair in the same spot for a long time, like your hair thins. That's what was happening with my bangs, like where I had my, my little bangs part up here. Um, and so I started to grow them out and part it in the middle. And I don't know, I just didn't feel very confident and not myself. And I felt like every day was a bad hair day and I don't know about you, but a bad hair day can kind of make or break your whole day. <laughs> like, you just walk out and you're like, I feel like a fool. I feel crazy. It's in like the most expensive concealer that I've ever owned, but I feel like it's the, one of the highest performing. Um, I don't really stray too much with a lot of like complexion products like 
tinted moisturizers and concealers um, because once I find something that works, I don't really feel the need to try anything else. Um, so I'm just gonna put this in the hollows here, kind of up, because I do have a lot of pigmentation on the corners of my eyes. I'm using the, I didn't even say what it was. I'm using the Kosas Revealer Concealer. This is in the shade 3W. I think I meant to grab 3.2, but you know, there's such a subtle difference between the two. I'm gonna take the Soft Matte Concealer while that kind of sinks in uh, and dries a little bit. And I'm going to put this all over where I have some blemishes and a little bit more redness. My skin is really dry right now. Um, yeah, which is kind of abnormal for my typical skin type. I don't really know what's going on. I ha did try a different active a few days ago, um, and that might be it. But I think I just need to do like... Give my face like a good scrub and then do like a moisturizing mask. Um, okay, so I got that all blended out and I had let the revealer concealer sit a little bit and then blended it out with the brush. So now I'm gonna take my sponge again and just make sure that all of that is evenly pressed in. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, that got a nice glow going. I got most of that redness covered. So now I'm going to move on to the eyes. So I'm going to start with this Tom Ford quad. This is the most expensive quad that I own. This is Tiger Eye, which is their cream formula, which they're not actually cream. They're just powders that perform like cream. It's very misleading. Um, and I'm gonna take, to start with, I'm gonna take this kind of taupey bottom shade all over the lid. Just a light base because then I'm going to be going in with a different Tom Ford product. We're bougie today. Next I'm gonna be taking in the Cream and Powder Duo by Tom Ford, the shade Naked Bronze. And I'm just going to take like a uh, little pencil brush and dab into the cream part. And then first dab it onto the back of my hand here. Focus this mainly on the outer corners of my eyes. So this week has been very stressful <laughs> at home. It's just, uh, we think our kitty is sick and He's just, you know, he's been through a lot this year. He lost his brother who was his litter mate and he's never been alone like this, I guess you could say. And so he's not really eating the way he used to. Um, and last year, I think it was the year before he had surgery because he had a non-cancerous lump on his side and then you know when you own a cat like even if they're okay with their stomach rubbed you're not really rubbing their stomach but then we noticed he has like four new lumps on his stomach and um yeah it's just there's still like some behavioral things where like wow this isn't what like bones does and I'm also gonna take this into the crease a little bit um he is 15 years old, so it's not like he's, like, a young cat. Um, anyway, yeah, so, like, that's been part of, like, the stress that's been at home. And I think part of that also is just, like, budgeting money and making sure... I'm taking this down underneath as well. Um, just stuff for, like, like, my own personal career, like budgeting money for travel that I need to do and like budgeting money for upcoming like art shows that I'm in and like handling the grant money that I'm receiving and like all of these things in congruence with um, 
just stuff with bones and it's made me very like scatterbrained and like kind of all over the place uh which leads me into the first time I had this little beeswax candle. Oop, that's a little much. Uh, I had this little beeswax candle that I always kept on my um, kitchen like windowsill. And my friend had gotten it for me for my birthday one year. And I was like, oh, I've never used it. So I lit it and I didn't even think of like how hot the flame could possibly be. Um, and then all of a sudden I, we were like, you smell plastic burning? And I was like, oh, well, I lit that candle in, in, the, um, in the kitchen and it turns out the heat from the candle was melting my blinds, which were pulled all the way up and were significantly higher above it melting the blinds so it smelled like burnt plastic in my apartment for a couple of days and then yesterday i totally forgot that i put well in my defense okay i didn't like totally forget that i put chicken in the oven but i was using a cast iron pan which they get really hot and two my uh, i still haven't really figured out my oven in this apartment it's significant it get it's really small so it gets really hot really fast and you know I put my chicken thighs in the normal amount of time that I've always cooked chicken thighs um and I wasn't really paying attention to the time because I, I had a timer going so I was just like oh yeah like as soon as it goes off like I'll check it and make sure that it's cooked all the way through um lo and behold <laughs> Everything around the chicken basically caught on fire in the oven and my house was filled with smoke. Um, yeah, so my house currently smells like baked chicken and like burnt, burnt chicken. So that's, that's a thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to Tiger Eye and I'm gonna take this really crazy dark brown. Uh, this is a super lovely brown. It, like anytime I want to do something like kind of smoked out, I always think of this, this brown and I'm going to take it slightly just on the outer corners here, just to deepen up that cream eyeshadow, just a little, little bit. So yeah, those are my, uh, that's, that's what's been going on with me. Oh, my cat might be sick. Um, just ir being irresponsible with fire <laughs> um, yeah so and I, stuff like that like it's so weird how certain things happen to you mentally like basically like i have the same i have the type of like trauma response crazy messed up things can happen to me and i like take it like okay like this is this is life but when like little things like burning my chicken or like melting my blinds or you know anything like that like it just it's so overwhelming weird like everyday little things like sometimes I just I have a really hard time handling it and I I don't know where that stems from maybe it's because I like bottle things a lot and I try to like put on a braver face than like what I actually am about situations but um yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I just crack. Like, I cried about my chicken. Like, who cries about burning chicken? I cried because I made my house smell. Like, my house still smells. <laughs> Cooked meat. And, and, like, I can laugh about it now, but, like, yesterday I was really sad. <laughs> I was really sad. Like, I, I need to film. I need to do makeup and talk to strangers, all 20 of my subscribers. Which I'm really happy. I'm really happy that I'm gaining subscribers. It's slow, but you know, with every platform now having like a really incredibly rigged, an, an incredibly rigged algorithm and like, there's just like no point in me constantly spending time trying to figure out the algorithm for all of the reels on Instagram and like, 
every time I'm on TikTok, I'm like, what am I doing on here? Like, I feel too old almost. Like, I turned 30 in March. Like, I feel too old for TikTok, you know what I mean? Not to say that TikTok is dumb or anything, and like, I enjoy watching TikTok. I just don't feel like a TikTok creator. Like, I'm long format. I got stories to tell about burning my kitchen down, like, crying about my cat, stuff to talk about, and I can't do that on TikTok. Know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know if anybody else feels that way. So yeah, I just I just feel like I got way more to talk about than allows me on a platform like TikTok. Oh, we're looking pretty bronze right now. Um, looks really nice, actually. I'm really really happy with it. Top part should probably reconnect these so no fuzzies or anything get in it. Um, so these duos here, they come with a shimmer topper and I love them. They're so sophisticated and beautiful. So I'm going to start at the inner corner and work my way over. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This video is a lot less formal and informative than my other ones. Also, like, remember back in the day when people on YouTube, like, beauty influencers had these types of, like, crazy-ass long nails. Like, I did these, um, for, like, celebration of, like, Halloween week. Like, I always like to get a little extra goth, you know? And, um, I've had these on for, like, four days or something, and I'm going out of my mind. Like, you see in my last video, um, <laughs> in my like November shop my stash, I had just put them on when I started filming that and you can still see the glue drying underneath and it looks like a certain white substance and I promise you that it is nail glue. I get these from Static Nails um, and I think that they are super high performing. They're really, really lovely um, and they last a really long time. I'm just putting this all over the lid and we're going all the way up to the brow. Like that's how I'm feeling today. Glitz and glam, my friends. Okay, so uh, back in the day, everybody had super long fake nails and I just, I don't know how they like put on makeup. Like it's so hard. I can barely scroll my mouse. I can barely use my like my mouse for my Mac. Um, I take my other hand and I scroll because for some reason, like, I can't get the motion. Somebody help. Somebody send help. So I have this itty bitty little liner brush here and I'm gonna dip back into Tiger Eye, back into that dark brown shade. And I'm gonna go onto my waterline here and lightly dab like a liner effect. You see what, how that, um, there we go. You see how that kind of like snatches the eye a little bit? And this won't move, like it's, I learned this, um, when I was doing a, an event with Aveda one time and the lady leading the class said she usually, if she did a liner, um, and or if she did a liner, she would always set it. You're trying to do um, some like an eye opening effect and you do like a nude liner. Stick powder in the water line, which I had never thought to do before then. Every time I want a little bit more in my eye look, this is what I do. And it lasts, in my opinion, just as long as a liner. I think that's really cool that um, you can't really notice in this eye quad by itself um is how much like how warm this brown is so when you blend it out onto your eye you don't really see the red in it but when i have it up against my uh my eyes which do lean they're hazel but there's a lot of like they're mostly green um you can see how warm this is because it's really making my eyes like pop i'm just gonna blend underneath this eye a little bit more yeah, I'm really happy with this eye look. This is 
what I wanted. The mascara, um, I'm actually not sure if this is my most expensive, but I want to basically use it up um, before it goes off. Um, and this is the Laura Mercier Caviar Volume. It's not on sale anywhere that I've noticed. I'm actually going to uh, look on Sephora when I'm done with this just to confirm um, and I'll report back. But I think that this is being discontinued because it's not on sale anywhere. And it really sucks because this is my, this has been my favorite mascara for a pretty long time. So um, it's kind of on its last leg, but I just wanna, I just wanna use it up, you know? Yeah, like look at the difference. It just really, you can just build and build and build and build, you know? All right, I'm gonna do the other eye. Sometimes when I do a smokier look, I like to take whatever's left on my complexion sponge and kind of just run it up along the edges here to make sure the dispersed pigments are even. Eyes and base are done, so let's move on to bronzing. So the most expensive one I own. I'm using this a lot lately, which I'm not mad about, and this is the Westman Atelier contour stick in the shade Biscuit. It has, um, it, it leans pretty cool, um, but not so cool that it's gonna look, gonna make you look too chiseled. I think that this is a perfect balance of bronze and contour. Take it, move my bangs back. I'm just gonna take it just right, right in the hollows. I'm not gonna bring it too high or too low. And then blend her out. This is a really lovely formula that um, I think it works best with a brush because it's not too high pigment, like it's very approachable, it's very user friendly, which I do appreciate. Um, but it works fine with a sponge too. So that blended out nicely. Using all my bougie makeup. And my most expensive blush is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate in the shade Peach Poison. So I'm gonna be kind of sticking more towards this side more than this. This is a little vibrant for this look right now. Um, these are incredibly pigmented. Um, unlike the Westman Atelier, these, I don't deem these blushes to be very user-friendly. Their eyeshadow, however, is very user-friendly. But the first time I used this, it was like, oof, like so much blush. So I just lightly tap onto the back of my hand before I go in. And then I start at the back and work my way down to avoid any sort of clown cheek. Because even if you put too much pigment back there, like your hair will most likely cover it and it's a lot easier to blend in with your contour. So I'm just gonna lightly dab that into, yeah, very beautiful. I don't use this as much as I should, to be honest. Um, and I've, I've been wanting to um, make an effort to use this blush more because it was, so expensive, too expensive, too, too expensive. I don't know what came over me when I bought it. I was like, yes, added it to my cart with just never looking back. Like I was like, I'm so ready for this. And I'm, I don't even really wear like matte or powder blushes all that often. Um, the majority of powder blushes that I own have some type of like shimmer or what have you. Um, this, I wouldn't say it's fully matte. It does have a little bit of luminescence to it, but it's not as glowy as I usually go for. But mm, part of me wants more, but part of me feels like I'll regret it. Uh, let me just, we'll just put a little bit more towards the back because this looks really pretty. Watching a lot of uh, YouTubers that 
have all been saying the same thing. They're like, more is more with blush. Just do not be afraid to go in. Very sophisticated. Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's... What a nice, like, summer to fall going into winter transition. I didn't think I would be able to wear this in the cooler months, but just using that darker shade. That's really up my alley. I really like that. All right, another Westman Atelier product. This is in the shade Nectar. This is their cream highlight stick. Through phases with my Westman Atelier stuff where I'm like using it all the time and then I have phases where I'm using it uh, a little more infrequent because I'm enjoying something else. Oh, there's a hair stuck in it. This is super emollient, makes your skin look incredibly healthy. I'm not sure, I can't really remember the ingredients that are in this per se, but I do know that it is super hydrating and is super good for the skin. I'm gonna take some up here since I'm so dry. Oh, I feel like a lizard. It's so not like me. I'm, if anything, I run oily. So anytime my skin's dry, I'm like, I don't know what to do. That is nectar. Ooh. She's expensive. She is expensive. If you've watched other videos by me before, you'll probably know that I don't necessarily recommend buying expensive liners. Um, I feel that drugstore liners are just as high-performing and nuanced as any type of high-end or luxury liner, but um, the one luxury liner that I absolutely adore and I think is very, very incredible. I use this all the time. Uh, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude, and this is truly my lips but better. These are super creamy. They blend out. You can wear them like as just a liner or I really like to use these all over the lips and then do like a clear lip gloss. Going in today. So just a little tappy tap. Really get that in there. And this will stay pretty intact just like this. Um, you could throw like a lip gloss, a lip balm, whatever, and that would be a completed look. But my next, I, I don't know if this is like, I don't know if this is my most expensive lipstick. I actually think my Chanel, actually my Chanel lipstick that I own is more expensive, but one, it was a gift, and two, it's like bubblegum pink. It's like a Barbie colored pink that I almost never wear. Um, so it's just, it wouldn't go with this look at all, so I'm not gonna use it. Um, but this one and a YSL lipstick that I own, I believe are my most expensive lip products, and I think that's like around 39 to $42, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna use the Dior Lip Glow, and this is in the shade Mahogany. This is just like a expensive lip balm. <laughs> it's, that's what it is, it's a lip balm. A nice vanilla minty smell and taste. Uh, not to the point if you're sensitive to those types of fragrances that you'll be super put off, at least in my opinion, because I'm not super into scents and taste in my lip products. Uh, and it doesn't bother me, so. But it sheared out, it does give me just like this nice, like hydrated flush of color that doesn't completely eradicate my favorite lip liner. You know what I mean? Back into my like Winona like Lydia Dietz vibe. Ooh, is my mental health showing? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I am like living for this Tom Ford tiger eye brown in my waterline. It's making my eyes like, shh, you know? 
Okay, so that is it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I got ready for the rest of the day. There's, I, I can see some blue in the sky, so I might go for a walk and kind of blow the stink off me, as my grandpa would say. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for hanging out. Um, there was no real point to this other than for me to just do my makeup on camera and use all my really expensive ones because I was feeling a little blue. And sometimes pretending like you're a rich bitch just does the trick. You know what I mean? Uh, bye!